Hi, this is Matt McIntosh and in this video I'm going to show you how I've gone about creating a animatable cat rig as you can see here um, so that I can you know animate my character without worrying about the overall topology of it um, which as we can see is quite high density at the moment um, and yeah, I mean, it's it's one point something million polys, nearly two million polys. So in order to make that mesh, I've um, I've got this 14,000 one. I've just duplicated my high res mesh, gone to Z uh, plugins, decimation master. Um, and then I've taken that across to 3ds Max to kind of block out the overall form of my cat rig. <laughs> Back in ZBrush though, um, what I've looked at doing is separating the mesh off into individual segments. So for example, on this headpiece, um, I've been masking off the areas that I'm after. So I'm just going to mask this mouth part here. And yeah, then what I'm going to do with that is um, go to the visibility section hide point and then split the hidden so that it becomes its own separate subtool and there we go that's split it into another subtool so if you do this with the whole uh, shape of the model you're going to end up with fingers knuckles uh, leg sections torso sections what I've done so I don't end up uh, exporting 60 odd tools is gone to the merge down tool and I've done that on all of the other parts what you'll find is because you've masked these areas uh, you end up with a residual mask just clear that and then you can go into the Z plugin I'm choosing like 2% but it depends on your machine um, it takes some time to calculate it obviously with the more polys that you've got in it the longer that it takes to uh, calculate how it can rebuild the mesh keeping the same shapes it's it's not too long a process if you're finding that you know you're sitting there for uh, five minutes or something that's probably too long um, and what you could do is break off the parts into separate subtools and then dynamesh them uh, not dynamesh sorry uh, decimation master them individually and then you could combine it back together later on <clears throat> Okay, so um, that's now calculated it. I'm going to click on the decimate current. As you can see, the edges have become faceted. Um, I'm just going to turn the polyframe on so you can see that, you know, it's it's really ripped the hell out of that mesh. I'm also going to auto group this thing um, so that when I do take it into 3ds Max, I can work with the individual meshes. So as you can see, anything where there's a, a different color is an individual kind of um, polygroup. I'm just making sure, I mean, I'm sure it's it's separate meshes, but I'm just making sure in this instance that anything that's next to each other is a separate group. Okay, so um, that's kind of looking okay. I just need to sort these horns out now, so I'm going to select them and dynamesh them down because they are nearly a million polys. So you should probably find that because these are one piece of geometry and there's only a million in them, they will condense down a lot quicker, that it will calculate the process a lot quicker. Okay, now I'm going to decimate the thing to make the change. It's taking it down from a million to just under 20,000 polys. And yeah, I'm going to combine those things down. So that is all now one subtool. And I'm going to export it out for 3ds Max. Okay, so I'm just going to switch over to Max and um, import this thing in. Ok, 
Okay, click on open. Okay, um, it's brought it in as like a whole bunch of different groups. So me making those polygroups might not have worked particularly well. Um, what I'm going to do is just see whether anything changes with the ZBrush preset. Um, no, nothing's changed. So what I'm going to do is import it in as a single mesh because I'll still have the elements and then editable poly and import that in. Okay, so what it's doing at the moment, it's just bringing all that geometry in together, trying to combine it as one. It's not going to weld verts together, but it is trying to make it as one single object. Okay, so it's brought in, it's ever so slightly out of position. You can play around with the export settings within ZBrush or you could potentially just line it up like this. Um, as this is going to be the animation uh, character, it's not really a worry if it's it's out of position ever so slightly. Um, if you were transferring through to uh, ZBrush all the time, you need to keep it in position. So as we can see, I'm still getting the option of using the elements within 3ds Max. So that's not too bad. And what I'm going to do is just detach this as a separate object. Do the same on the other side. And I'll take out the forearms as well, just to give you a demo of what I'm on about. Okay, so we're not actually going to be rigging this thing. Um, what we're going to be doing is making the shapes follow the cat rig. So I've split it up into the various sections. I'm just going to hide everything else apart from these arms. Um, so the easiest way to get your mesh following your cat rig so that when you animate it, you can see whether things intersect is just by linking it to the bone that you want it to follow. So if I was to do the upper arm as well, <clears throat> I'm just clicking the uh, mesh and then clicking on the link and dragging over the uh, cat rig. And we should now be able to see that when I move the arm, the uh, meshes that I've just linked will follow it. Now, because animation relies on rotations, not moving, um, the arm's stretching. So if I was to put like a, um, an animation layer onto my cat rig and turn the auto key on. I've moved it to frame 33. No particular reason for that. I'm just demonstrating that if I move to a, another frame, rotate things round, it will keep the uh, same you know lengths and things on the arm. And we can see that that's, that's kind of moving that arm around without too much of an issue. So yeah, I mean, hopefully you get the idea that you could do that with the entire body. Um, that being said, if you don't want all these boxes hanging around, um, what you could do is you could swap the mesh out so that you're not using the basic boxes and you do actually use the mesh that we've just imported. So if we go to the edit poly and we attach the piece of geometry we're after. We can then go to the initial cat rig box, delete it out, and then collapse down to the object. So select your object first and then collapse all. Click on yes, and we'll find that that has become the actual cat animation rig now. Okay, so I hope that gives you an indication of how you could use a proxy mesh uh, with a cat rig to get some animations done. Thanks for watching.